Hey guys, welcome back to Fairwinds RV. I'm Candace. Jeremy's taking the week off. And this week I'm gonna bring you a video on making homemade bread in your convection oven. Um, I'm super excited. That was one of the things I thought I was gonna have to give up when we moved into RV, but I think we'll be able to make it work and I'm really excited. So I did just a little bit of research and found out that um, Americans, just Americans, consume the, an average of 53 pounds of bread per year, per person. So that's a lot of bread. Um, and you can make it for pennies on the dollar. So the recipe that I use only has four ingredients, five if you include water, flour, sugar, yeast, and salt. And it makes the most delicious bread you have ever tasted. So I've been making this recipe for a couple of years. I found it online. It's called My Mother's Peasant Bread, and I will leave a link to the recipe uh, down below because I did not invent this recipe. And so I promised you that I was gonna try to figure out how to make bread in the convection oven and also in the pit boss. And I've been promising my husband freshly baked bread for several months, so today's the day. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're going to proof the yeast so you're gonna go ahead and put your lukewarm water in your bowl. Add two teaspoons of sugar. This helps to activate the yeast, gives it something to feed on. So just kind of give it a good stir, kind of help it dissolve as much as possible. All right, then you're gonna take your yeast I used to bake a lot, so I bought a lot of yeast at one point. You're just gonna take two teaspoons and just sprinkle gently in, on the top of your water. All right, so we're gonna let that sit for about 10 minutes. At the end of the 10 minutes, it should be nice and, and kinda, kinda bubbly, foamy. So while that's sitting, I'm just gonna move it off to the side. We're gonna mix up our flour. So this is four cups of um, all-purpose flour. And we're gonna mix it with two teaspoons of, of salt. Give it a good stir. You wanna make sure that the salt is fully incorporated because you don't want to put your yeast directly on the salt or the salt will, will kill it. So just make sure it's not sitting on top. All right, we're gonna let this sit for about 10 minutes and then we'll come back and see our yeasty action. All right, so our 10 minutes is up and our yeast is nice and uh, foamy. So we're just gonna give it a quick stir, get it kind of all incorporated. All right, and we're just gonna pour it into our flour. This recipe is super easy. All right, we're just gonna stir until it's incorporated. I don't think I mentioned before, but this is a no-need recipe, so you don't have to get your hands dirty. You don't have to get the mixer out. My daughter was the lucky beneficiary of the uh, KitchenAid mixer that she has been coveting for many years. I didn't feel like bringing it with us. In the rig, I felt it was too heavy. So she got it. All right, so all of the flour is incorporated. I don't see any, any dry spots. Let's see, we're just gonna kind of pat this down a little bit. All right, now we're gonna cover it with a tea towel and let it sit. We have a nice warm day out, so I'm gonna stick it in our bedroom because that's the warmest uh, place in the rig. If it's winter and you don't really have a warm spot, it says you can turn your oven on for about a minute, turn it off, and then you can set your bread in the oven and that residual heat will just kind of help it, help it rise. So we're gonna let it sit for about two hours and then we'll come back and get it 
transferred into pans and put in the oven. All right, so it's been right at two hours. This has been setting in the bedroom at about 73 degrees or so. So we'll go ahead and take off the tea towel. Just with your hands, just kind of loosen the dough from the sides of the bowl. I'm gonna turn it over on itself. You can do this with two forks, or I just like to use my fingers. Divide it in two. You're gonna take it, you're really not gonna do anything. Just plop it in your pre-oiled bowl. Normally I do this in glass bowls, but I don't really have any with me here in the rig. So I'm gonna use these um, loaf pans. All right, so that's gonna sit there for about 30 minutes, and then we're going to preheat the oven and then we'll get them we'll get them plopped in. So I had never used a convection oven before we moved into our rig, and I was a little bit nervous, but I went online and found some pretty easy directions. Um, they're fairly easy to use. So I happen to have the, the high point model, but they all seem to work pretty much the same. So in order to use the convection feature, you're gonna push the convection button and then set the time for whatever whatever temp it is you want. So we're gonna do 425 for our recipe. And then you hit the start button. That's gonna start the preheat cycle. And you'll see this button up here, that's or this light that's, uh, that's flashing and the fan will kind of come on. This line will fill up as it goes through the preheat cycle. So my microwave and most of yours will probably come with two racks. So you've got the, the long flat rack which is gonna go in the microwave, and I'll show you in a little bit, into, into brackets that are set on each side. I typically don't use this one though as much. I prefer this one because this one sits on your turntable and as you're cooking, the turntable spins. So your food um, can have a more even um, heating and it sits lower. This one tends to sit about, I don't know, an inch and a half taller, which means that your food is a lot closer to that to that top of the microwave. And I've just noticed a little bit of um, burning or too much browning. So I don't really use this one. The only time I use this one is if I'm using, making something in like a nine by 13. I typically make everything in like an eight by eight or a 12 inch pizza pan, 12 inch pizzas fit perfectly in here, in case you're wondering. All right, so once this goes through its preheat cycle, then we'll go ahead and get our bread in here. We're gonna do one loaf in the convection oven, and we're gonna do one loaf in the pit boss. And we're gonna compare how they turn out, how they taste, the overall appearance of them, and um, we'll give you our, our results. All right, so as you've noticed, the microwave has gone up in volume just a little bit. So it kind of beeps at you and then the fan will get a little bit more intense when it's done it's with its preheat. So this recipe calls for us to cook the bread at 425 and then lower it to 375. You're not really able to do that in a convection oven. So what I've done is I'm gonna go ahead and cover um, the loaf that's going into the convection oven with foil. And we're gonna let it cook for about 30 minutes and then we'll remove the foil and let it cook for an additional 15 minutes. The one that's going on the pit boss, however, because that temp is set and we can adjust it, we'll go ahead and just leave it as it is and lower the temp at the 30 minute point. So now that it's done with the preheat cycle, you just open it up, place your rack, whether you're doing this one or the long one, make sure it's seated on your turntable, place your food on top, Set your time, so we want 45 minutes total. I always like to give a little bit more time so the oven doesn't shut off. So I'm just gonna go do a full 60 minutes. So you just put your time in and then hit start and your turntable will start spinning and now you're cooking. So again, so we only need roughly 45 minutes for the entire loaf of bread. The problem is if I, if I set the timer for 45 minutes, the microwave, the convection oven is going to shut off at the 45 minute point. And if the bread's not done, we're going to have to um, kind of reset it and it's gonna have to go through a brief preheat period. So I always just set it for longer. And then I set the timer on my phone 
for the time to actually check it. So you can then open up the, the oven door, check it, shut it, and then hit the, hit the start button and it won't have to go through that preheat again. Our pit boss is also uh, preheated to about 400. So I'm just gonna place our loaf of bread here in the center. We'll go ahead and close the lid. I will set my timer for 30 minutes. And when that's over, then we will go ahead and turn the heat down on this one to 375 and remove the foil from the convection oven. All right, so I'm just checking the internal temp. Should be about 190. All right, we have 194, so this one's done. All right, so now we'll check this one. All right, that one's over 190. All right, so I'm gonna flip these out of the pan and we're just gonna let them cool for a little bit. Whoop. All right, so that one got a little bit done, it looks like. But I have high hopes for this one. Oh, that one looks beautiful. So this one is a much better finish. So I'm liking the look of the convection oven rather than the pit boss. It seems like the pit boss cooked a little bit too warm, too much. All right, so we've allowed both of these to cool down for a little bit. So now we're gonna cut into them. I'm just gonna cut right down the center and we'll see what they look like. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and try the pit boss one first. Mm. Wicked is waiting uh, patiently. He's eyeballing that bread. So that was the taste test of the Pit Boss one, which doesn't look quite as nice. It's kind of a dull color. Whereas this one is this golden, yummy goodness. All right, so we'll check that one out. So they both have really good flavor. This one, because it did get a little bit burned on the bottom, kind of has kind of a, almost a scorched flavor, but they both have really good um, inside. So they both turned out really good, but I think I like the convection oven version better than the Pit Boss. All right, so as we all know, the true test is whether or not it is doggy approved. I think it's wicked approved. All right, so our bread making is done and I found that we can actually make bread in the convection oven. Um, I was kind of surprised. The Pit Boss version did not turn out as well, but the convection oven turned out beautifully. So the next time I'm going to make one loaf out of that same recipe, but I'm going to do it in my two quart Pyrex glass baking dish. And instead of using foil, I'm gonna use the glass lid that goes on top, leave that on there for 30 minutes, take it off for the next 15, and then it should produce a nice round loaf that you see a lot of times in the bakery. So I'm super excited to do that the next time. If you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe, and we will see you next time.